Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today I have a potpourri or variety of topics, but let's first talk about this setup. Once again, I'm standing in front of my bookshelf back here. I'm using my phone camera to record this, but I'm recording the audio onto my computer, which is down here. I sit at my desk for most of my videos, but today I'm going to be doing it from up here. So iPhone camera and audio through the computer. I'm also going to try out cinematic mode and video mode. So let's start with cinematic mode. So here we go. First, some gifts I received this summer. In every video that I make, buried in the description, I have an Amazon wish list. These are books that eventually I want to purchase or hopefully find in a used bookstore. I've been fortunate enough to have a number of these books fulfilled by some of my viewers, and I really appreciate it. One of the biggest ones, perhaps I should say, one of the most expensive ones came this summer. Let me just read from the note that came along with the package. A gift from Andre. Hope you enjoy devouring the cover art as much as I do. Good luck with your channel. And here's the book that Andre sent me. Ray Guns and Rocket Ships. Now this is where I'm not sure if the cinematic mode really works. So I'm going to change it over to video and you can tell me if that works better. And we're back. Here's that book again. Ray guns and rocket ships. Perhaps maybe holding it on this side would be better. There we go. This is a vintage science fiction book cover art. And this is cover art from the UK. I'm just going to briefly read from the blurb on the back. Ray guns and rockets. Space-suited heroes caught in the tentacles of evil insectoid aliens. Who could resist such wonders? Science fiction paperbacks exploded over the 1940s and 1950s literary landscape with the force of an alien gamma bomb. Titles such as Rodent Mutation, The Human Bat vs. The Robot Gangster, Dawn of the Mutants, and Mushroom Men from Mars appeared from fly-by-night publishers making the most of the end of post-war paper rationing. They were brash and seductive. For around a shilling, the future was yours. The stories were often conceived around a pre-commissioned cover and a title suggested by the publisher and the writers were paid by the word and sometimes not paid at all. Titles were knocked out at a key pounding pace, sometimes over a weekend by authors now lost to literary history, plus a few professionals who could spot an opportunity, who were forced to write under pseudonyms like Ray Cosmic, Steve Future, Vector McGroon, or Vargo Staten. Despite the tight deadlines and poor pay, the book's cover artists still managed to produce works of multi-hued, brain-bending brilliance, and collected here is an overview of their output during an unparalleled period of brash optimism and experimentation in publishing. So not magazines, but paperbacks. In June, I was watching one of my friend's channels, Stephen E. Andrews' Outlaw Bookseller channel, and on it, he mentioned that he was looking for one of the Crown Publishing books. I've talked about them before. Let me just get one here from my shelf. The book he was having difficulty sourcing was The Paradox Man by Charles L. Harness and this specific edition. It's a classics of modern science fiction from Crown Publishing. Now, as I was purchasing books, as I was collecting the series, I had a double. So I sent it off to Stephen. And in return, I received a package. In it, there is some ephemera, which I'm going to show you first, and two books. The first thing I found in the package was a postcard. That's not Stephen E. Andrews. That's Jules Burt, a good friend of both Stephen and I. And he used his postcard as a surprise, I guess, to me. Some of the things that he said on here were, Well, I don't have my own postcards, but as you see, I know someone who does. Apology for the condition of one of the books, but it is the real thing. It's a first edition with the complete UK text. And he's also enclosed a second book, an uncommon paperback, now worth silly money, signed by the author. It's a true first and only printing. Best wishes, Steve. 
I don't know about you, but when I receive books in the mail, I love it when bookmarks are included. And Stephen E. Andrews did that, and he signed it. So this is from the publication series where we have the 100 must-read science fiction novels. So what are the books? The first book that Steve was talking about is from one of his favorite authors. It's a first hardcover edition. Now, if you watch The Outlaw Bookseller, you know that he loves to have his hardcovers in perfect condition. So he was upgrading this copy, and he was kind enough to send me the previous one. The Chalk Giants by Keith Roberts. And it was first published in 1974, and the dedication is to Michael Moorcock. Steve loves to do some literary travel videos, and this scene you may recognize from one of his videos. I'll put a link in the description to this video. And now, the paperback, the true first, a rare printing, a hundred must-read fantasy novels by Nick Renison and Stephen E. Andrews. It's now a companion piece to the science fiction one that I have. Only this one is signed by Stephen E. Andrews. To Richard, now a rare first edition. As viewers of this channel know, my primary focus is on science fiction of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. But some of these authors also wrote fantasy. Ursula K. Le Guin, A Wizard of Earthsea, was one of my first fantasy reads. So perhaps I'm going to have to change my channel name into Vintage SFF, Science Fiction and Fantasy. I don't think so. My primary focus still would be science fiction, but I'm not afraid to go into the fantasy realm. And this is a great resource. Let me read from the introduction. This book is not a best of. As we decided, it would be impossible to produce a definitive list of the greatest fantasy novels while limiting ourselves to only 100 titles without making unacceptable subjective choices. Nor is it a top 100, as popularity polls only tell us what we already know, and as fantasy is about the unbridled imagination, too much reliance on the familiar should be anathema to fantasy readers. Instead, we decide that our title should steer us, and we have chosen 100 books we feel one could read, or read about, to gain an introductory overview of fantasy, while leaving many essential works to be discovered by the reader in the extra features. So now I'm going to use this resource to discover new fantasy, and also to research fantasy that I plan to read. Case in point, another book I received this summer, not a gift, a book I purchased from Book Outlet as a remainder. Michael Moorcock, Elric of Melbourne. This is an omnibus of four novels. When I was paging through a hundred must-read fantasy books, I looked at Michael Moorcock. I've read some of his science fiction and a couple of his fantasy works. Steve on his channel has also talked about his fantasy work, in particular, Elric of Melbourne. In a couple of weeks, Steve is actually going to visit Michael Moorcock in Paris, and I thought, in preparation, I should read the first novel of Elric. So that video will be coming up next. But now I have some resources to go along with the book. I have Steve's fantasy novel book, as well as his channel, and I also have John Clute's The Encyclopedia of Fantasy. I think using these books in research helps my videos to have a bit of perspective on a book. So stay tuned, subscribe, and you won't miss my upcoming video on Elric of Mel Nibble. There, I knew I would blow that one. So stay tuned, subscribe, and you won't miss my video on Elric of Melnibone. That's a tough one. Melnibone. I don't even know if I said it right in the beginning of this video. Elric of Melnibone. Next up, I'm going to take the camera and show you a few of my bookshelves. This will just be a partial tour, but I thought some people might like to see some of the bookshelves that I have behind me here. I have a cubicle style bookshelf from Ikea and it is five by five. 
So there's 25 cubicles in this shelf. In the video, you'll also notice that I have a bookshelf over here where I keep my SF Masterworks, and that is a two by four. So there's eight cubicles on that shelf. So what I wanna to do today is take you through the top two shelves of five each, so 10 cubicles of books. So let's take a look at cubicle number one. This cubicle holds my Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. This was the first series of books that I reviewed. There are 38 of them. You can see I have a mezzanine in the back where I continue on with books. It seemed like the most sensible way to use the cubicle space. At the end in the back there, you'll see that I do have some books that come from what I call the Apocrypha of the series. Eight books that were selected for the series, but never did get the icon or title of a science fiction specials. And that continues into this second shelf here, as well as a couple books from the a science fiction specials series two. The ones that I kept were The Invincible by Stanislav Lem and Bob Shaw Orbitsville. Next, I plan this fall to be reviewing the a science fiction specials series three. That's the books you see in front of you. The most notable book of this group is Neuromancer by William Gibson. It's a true first. In the back shelf, you'll see the books that I'm reviewing with Ira from SF Words of Wonder and Matt from Science Fiction Reads. It's the best of series from Ballantyne for different science fiction authors. It came out in the 1970s. Then on shelf three, I have a continuation in the back of the best of series by Ballantyne, as well as a couple other books that are best ofs that aren't part of that Ballantyne series. The best of J.G. Ballard and the best of Robert Silverberg. I have a copy of the Paradox Man that I'm hanging on to because I want to compare it with the one that I have here in the classics of modern science fiction. I understand that Charles L. Harness revised the book, so I just want to see and compare. I have the Asimov series and selected works by H.G. Wells just because I was looking for a place to put them. I'm not the kind of person who organizes everything according to authors. In the previous two bookshelves, they're organized chronologically in order of the series that was made by the publisher. So too for this series. This is the classics of modern science fiction from Crown Publishing. There are 10 books in the series, and these are in order. Once again, I fit in one of my favorite authors, Ursula K. Le Guin. Here are some recent books that I picked up of hers. Our next shelf, another new favorite for me, is Stanislav Lem. And so I collected his works, and then I decided I'd just like to keep on collecting the penguins that had similar colored spines. Brian Aldous Hothouse is out of place, so I could just keep the Stanislav Lem books together. In the back, we simply have a variety of B format books. Then we have my reference books, both on science fiction and fantasy. We have Ursula K. Le Guin's The Books of Ursie, the complete illustrated edition illustrated by Charles Vess. We have The Three-Body Problem and its sequels, and then that's just simply a journal that I use. Let's now go to shelf number six. In this shelf, I've been collecting James S. A. Corey's The Expanse. I've watched the TV series, which I enjoyed thoroughly, but I do want to go through the series someday. So anytime I've found these books in used bookstores, I've picked them up. Similarly, any time that I've found some Alistair Rental books, I've tried to pick those up as well. On this shelf here, I have Tory Essential books, books that I picked up from bookoutlet.ca.
In this cubicle here, I have my NESVA, New England Science Fiction Association books, as well as a number of science fiction book club books. And on the last shelf that I'm showing you today, this is a bit of an overflow from my SF Masterworks shelf over here. So we see Roger Zelazny. I have a collection of books from Golanx of William Gibson. You can see here the older SF Masterworks with the numbered spines. Two of these books were not reprinted in the yellow spined ones, so I'm very glad I have The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard and Now Wait for Last Year by Philip K. Dick. A couple classics in here, as well as a fantasy book by Dan Simmons. In the back, you can see on the mezzanine shelf, the Golden Age Masterworks, along with an example of the best of SF Masterworks. The M. John Harrison book, it looks like it should be part of the SF Masterworks library, but it's not. There is a book in the yellow spined ones that is a match for it as well. I also have a classic fantasy novel that I want to read by Robert Holdstock, Mathagal Wood. And just because it's from Golangs, I placed in here a book by Adam Roberts, Jack Glass. So I have some space to grow in there. Now, if you think this is very chaotic, you're probably right, but I do have some order. Eventually, I'll talk about these books over here. I have those in alphabetical order by the author. And down here, you'll find many of my vintage SF books, and those are in alphabetical order as well. We'll come to those another day. So if you have any questions or comments about my library, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.